Mr. Malcolmson, you've heard from all parties now, I think, some frustration about BC accessing the wage subsidy. I have information in front of me, but I, I really must be reading it incorrectly. So I just want to confirm. BC received $123 million in the federal wage subsidy. Is that right? $122.8 million, sorry. Yes, that's correct. And if you look at the breakdown of where those funds went, uh, $71 million, give or take, went to Bell Media. As yeah. I mentioned, Bell Media was that operation was one of the hardest hit by the pandemic. And I'll just give you an example, you know, advertising revenues, which Bell Media is dependent upon in, in that media business plummeted by over 30% just in Q2 2020. Well, I, pr I appreciate, I, I, I have limited time, but I do appreciate that. And I, I took the point that jobs would have been lost, but for the federal wage subsidy of $123 million almost. And so this is where I, I'm a little confused because I'm reading a BC news release from Q3 2020 saying, BC has a strong financial position with $5.2 billion in available liquidity at the end of Q3, 10% internet revenue growth, 4% growth in year-to-date cash flows from operating activities, a 13.7% higher free cash flow, which obviously then translates from my reading in the news release to actually a 5% increase in the Q4 dividend. So instead of, I don't know, accessing that available liquidity, instead of perhaps not increasing that dividend, you thought it best to access public funds? No, what we did was we were a participant in a government program that was very well designed and intended to keep Canadians working at a critical time. And we participated in that program commensurate with the impact that the pandemic was having upon our workforce. And, uh, you know, I have to say that, you know, when you, when you quote our financial results, and I don't do math as quickly as you do, but you do have to remember that uh, in order to build Canada's networks, in order to invest in 5G, in order to have fiber rolled out to 5.6 million households and wireless home internet targeted to reach a million households, you need investment capital. And the only way you get investment capital is, is from shareholders that are willing to, to invest their money with, with your company in order to uh, fund your network expansion. So if, if we don't have investment capital, capital and if we're not delivering shareholder returns, Canada will not have the level of investment that's needed to build the networks that we need in order to- Okay, sure. that's, a, that's, a, that's a long way of saying though, that where Main Street businesses are getting crushed in a pandemic and you see increased dividends, you could have gone from 5.2 billion in available cash flow down to 5.05 billion dollars and available cash flow, and you would have blinked. Whereas we have Main Street businesses getting crushed, unable to access some of the, the necessary supports, and, and here you are increasing dividends. So I take it though, you would not have reformed the queues so that a profitable company like yours with 5 billion in available cash wouldn't continue to receive millions of dollars in taxpayer funds. That you, 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 you like it just the way it is. Uh, on, on a separate note, is access to the internet, both broadband and wireless, does BC view access to the internet as an essential service? Yes, it is essential for Canadians, particularly at a time like this. And when we look at the broadband space, resellers have existed in the market for quite some time. Do you oppose the reseller marketplace? The reseller marketplace undermines investment. There's, there's no, absolutely no debate about that. Their business model is based on accessing networks that someone else builds, in our case, Bell, and, and using those networks to to provide service to consumers. And if you look at what we need, as I said in my opening remarks, we need ubiquitous connectivity quickly for all Canadians. And the only way that's gonna happen is through companies that are willing to invest. I'll, so, just give, so I'll give you, just let me finish. I'll give you a couple of stats. You know, we, we as an industry, and I'm talking about facilities-based carriers, uh, invested in the range of $46 billion. Well, the reseller community invested $150 million. And, and yet, which, another which part of, of the equation, Mr. Malcolmson, is price. It's always accessibility, but also affordability, which is a key component of accessibility. And without the resellers, you would gouge Canadians even worse. I'm not going to comment on that. I'm not sure it's a question. I, I don't it's think not a question. Problem. It's a fact. I appreciate your time.